everybody, this is Stephen Dempsey. On one just released a new version of their Photo Raw software, 2018.5. It has a number of major new features, and today I'll be talking about one of them, LUTs. LUTs have been around in the filmmaking and video world for a long time, but are relatively new to photography. They are now available as a new filter in the effects module. So what is a LUT? LUTs are lookup tables, just take in color values and output the corresponding colors based on a mathematical formula. Some LUTs change saturation, some increase contrast, and some can change the input colors completely. So in essence, your computer is looking at the colors coming in from your original photograph and then remapping those colors, tones, or contrast values and outputting a completely new look. So in a way, it's kind of like a preset. Um, only that you don't have a lot of control over um, the way it changes the photograph. You have control over three things. The opacity, um, the contrast, and the saturation. Beyond that, you're definitely at the mercy of whatever way the, the, uh, the LUT is looking like. Whatever that preset looks like, um, you're locked into that look. Which, given that there's such a variety of these uh, looks, is not necessarily a bad thing. You just have to kind of look at them a little bit differently. So let's dig into uh, the concept by looking at one of my photographs here. So this is a shot that I did in Glacier National Park and um, it's a pretty flat photograph um, and uh, I want to try to add some atmosphere. So I'm going to use a couple of LUTs and uh, stack them and I'm also going to use some textures and uh, we're going to see what we can do with that uh, for in terms of like trying to create more of an ethereal look. So I'm going to take this into effects and add a lot. So if we hit uh, add filter you can now see that lots is one of the actual options. So I'm going to click on that and immediately it's going to uh, give me the first look in the, the stack. So uh, there's a couple of ways of going through uh, the, the available looks and let me just show you how to do that. So I'll open up the panel here on the left and if you go into filters uh, you can see all of those uh, LUTs right there. Um, you can see a larger view by clicking there and scooting through here. Now if you can kind of tell uh, which look you want right away this is a good way to go. I kind of like um, scooting through all the looks really quickly to see. So you can do that by going back over to the panel here, going to more, and then starting at the top here and basically just arrow down and you can fly through all these looks really fast. So these are kind of baked in look, uh, looks that in, within these this particular effect, as I said, you can change the opacity, the contrast and saturation, but the overall look itself remains uh, the way it is. So looking, just scooting down here, um, I like Plastic Punch is the name of this one. Let's go back down and choose that one. Uh, so before and after, you can see there's quite a dramatic difference from the original. So I'm pretty happy with that right away. Um, again, you can change the contrast, um, but I'm happy with the default on that. And this, the saturation uh, is the same. You can boost it or you can take it down to uh, nothing, which is essentially black and white. Um, okay, so let me add uh, a texture now at this point. So I just bought these uh, a new set of textures from Photomorphous. Close this panel here. Uh, called uh, mist and fog textures and I really love them so I'm going to add one of those to this particular photograph. So let's see where I have this here. Um, right here. And the one that I like is um, number 12. Okay, so that's not making a huge difference, you might say, and you'd be right. So the reason why is because uh, this particular these this set of textures are optimized for um, the lighter mode. So you can see immediately that that's having a much bigger impact. Now the only uh, change I'm going to make to this is I'll just bring the light, the brightness down a bit, um, probably to about there, and maybe just boost this a little bit, the opacity. Okay, I like what that's doing. Now, um, I think what I'm going to do at this point is add another LUT, and you can stack these LUTs. Um, probably not going to be a good idea to stack them all at 100% opacity, um, so I'm going to add another one and uh, bring the 
opacity down. So I like this, except I certainly don't like it at 100%. So I'll bring it down to about there. So you can see the difference. The colors are just popping a little bit more. They're, they kind of play into that ethereal look that I want. Um, and then what I want to do is add another texture and another uh, photomorphous uh, texture I'm going to use. I have no affiliation with these guys. I just really like what they do. Um, this is actually another kind of uh, fog themed texture. This is called fog bound. And the one that I like is this one, number eight. Where is it? Number six. Right there. And uh, let's see. Let's bring the brightness down a little bit. And that's pretty subtle. It just gives it a kind of a, a, a bit of a painterly look. And to me, the success in using textures, period, is really to, to be subtle about them. Um, you can make them really a strong part of your picture to the point where they're almost overwhelming your, your look. Um, and then the problem with doing that is that when you do another photograph and you use that same kind of, of intensity, then all your photographs start looking the same and you're losing the whole point of the subtlety of the texture. That's just my opinion. There are lots of, of people who like to put strong textures in and it works just fine for their style. But for me, it's all about subtlety. So uh, to finish off this, then what I'll do is just add a vignette and I'll just make it subtle. And I like how that looks. It's got a, it's got the kind of ethereal feel that I, I think that the fog looks actually quite authentic. But um, the, the LUTs heavily contributed to me being able to create this look very quickly. So if we go back to um, the original, it's completely different. I mean, it's very flat, and even though it's a, it's a pretty picture, it's still kind of uninspiring. Um, and then with all of the effects that we did with the, with the look at the LUTs and the textures, I think it turned out really nice. So I'm just going to pop all these off again really quick just to, so we can review what we did. So that was the original, and then we add, added that uh, punchy LUT, and then we added the fog effect, and then another LUT, which uh, I put in at about 28% um, and stacked it over the original. It just popped the colors a little bit more, and then I added um, a kind of a painterly texture, and then the vignette. So I really like how that, that uh, turned out. So um, again, LUTs uh, to me can... Uh, you know, they can add a look to your photograph very quickly and give you ideas as to where to go creatively. Um, and you can selectively apply them. They, everything doesn't have to be 100%. You can manipulate the color, you can change the contrast, and you can um, manipulate the opacity. And that makes a big difference to the overall look. Now, that was uh, this example of a landscape shot is one genre that you can use lots. And you can use them in every genre. But um, what I want to show you now is um, a completely different kind of a, a photograph. And we're going to just uh, show you how to let's work with that. So if I go back to my browse module, go into grid view. And if I pull up this portrait. Okay, and if we go back into effects here. And then add the LUTs again. And then, I, I, again, I, I like to go through the, the browsing in a fast way this way. So you can see that when it comes to a portrait, which is an entirely different kind of composition and photograph and color schemes in general, um, the, the looks make a huge impact on this particular um, portrait. And you can see really how dramatic that is. Um, the one that I like for this is actually called Titanium. And the contrast, I mean, the, the saturation slider is not going to work in this because it's black and white. But the contrast uh, is actually pretty dramatic. If I pop it up here versus the low contrast, it really, it, it changes it stylistically. I like that real strong contrast in this. It gives it a kind of almost a grungy black and white look. And then um, with the opacity, you can introduce the original and figure out where exactly you want to stop. I like the full effect here.
So that's it. Lutz is it's harder to explain than to use, um, but essentially just look at Lutz as just being a different type of preset. And um, there's there are plenty of uh, of Lutz available online um, for free. And if you go onto on one site, um, there's there's a I think there's a ton more um, Lutz that you can actually download aside from what ships with the, with the software itself. The best way to do this, again, is just experiment and uh, just try it. And um, I think that you'll find that it's a very efficient way to get uh, a broad um, sense of, what, of, of different types of looks for an image and can uh, get your creative juices flowing a lot faster than just kind of futzing around with different type of presets and not really know where you're going. There's such a vast variety of looks. Um, it really helps for figuring out a direction for uh, your particular photograph. So that's it. If you enjoy this video, please like it. If you like what I'm doing in general, please consider subscribing. So uh, until next time, thanks for watching.